to make to wear to the symphony? I don't know. Do you have any suggestion? I don't, but you know we have some guests on today that are going to show us lots of different techniques, and I bet you'll get an idea from that. You know what that means. Let's get quilting. Quilt Central is made possible in part by Bernina of America. Nothing sews like a Bernina. Nothing. Quilting Machines International, providing quilting machines and supplies for the world. Sulky of America, taking creativity to new heights with decorated threads, stabilizers, and books. American Professional Quilting Systems, hand-guided elegance. The American Quilter Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. Paducah, McCracken County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Paducah, where no one is a stranger. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Welcome to Quilt Central. Celebrating quilting in everyday living with your hosts, Jane Donaldson and Donna Wilder. Today we have Marilyn Badger with us and she's going to show us a brand new technique called Salvi Sandwich Lace. Hi Marilyn. Hi Jane, nice to be here. I'm so excited about this because I've wanted to try it myself and I just haven't known the basics so I was hoping you could show us how. Great, great. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we, we have a piece of ultra salvi on here. It's the thicker stuff mm -hmm. so you need that for the long arms. It's heavy enough to pin right on. Right, and it's heavy enough to not tear apart when your needle goes through it. And this is a wash away right. product. Warm wa hot water. Great. So uh, what I've done is I've marked my duster pattern. It's the same vest pattern as I have on, which is what I use for this one. And I like to use stuff in between the threads rather than just make it plain threads. So these are uh, silk hand-dyed silk tops that I got in Australia. Now you could take silk like, batting. Like silk batting or mm -hmm. yarn. But still. Right, and tear it, tear it apart and hand dye it. If you're going to be doing any hand dyeing, the Bible for hand dyeing in my book is Ann Johnston's Color by Accident. Gives you all the recipes, makes it really easy. And you'll end up with a fabric store if you dye fabric. So, <laughs> <laughs> kind of into uh, it. so uh, I, I got these silk tops and they come like this. They come like, like a skein. Long string. Yeah. And so you want to take them and tear them apart like this. Just get them really separated so that they don't look like strings or threads in there. And just position them all around. I've got most of it colored. I like covered. I like to do the, if I do some peach in one color, then get some green because this has got various, various uh, colors in it. And when you dyed this, you left it in a skein and you kind of just dipped a little piece at a time? Mm -hmm. Well, you can lay it in a bowl or in a, a Teflon dish. Just lay it out there, pour one color on one end, one color on the other, let them seep in together. Oh. And then you'll get three colors right there. Good idea. Um, so I get that all nice and covered with the silk. And then I can lay some threads on it. I'm going to get one more little piece up now, there. Now, if it sticks out beyond your pattern... Then just kind of scrunch it back in there. Keep it in bounds. But it's not, it's not essential that it stay right there. Now, then I might want to take some threads. And you can get all kinds of threads. These are some that I got oh, just in a beautiful. package like this. Mm -hmm. Tear them apart. And I've cut them like the length of this. So I just want to kind of position them right right on top of here uh, and I let them hang down off the edge of the bottom so that you'll have some fringe. Does, oh. I like the fringe. Or you can trim them off later yep. if you or want. You can, yeah, you can just have a straight hem if you want. Just do all different kinds. Lay them in there. You, you don't have to lay them straight. You can just kind of curl them around or whatever. If I'd probably want. lay them straight so I look taller. Yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> that way they, they'll come off the end and, and give you some fringe. Now once I get that all covered with with threads, then I take my spray adhesive 
And I, you might put little pieces of silk in there too, like I've done here with these. Oh, oh actually shape. pieces of fabric. Right. Hand dyed silk that kind of goes. Then I just kind of lightly spray this. It makes it stay put like that. And then I take a, a little piece of the lightweight salvi. This is the ultra light stuff. And this comes in a cut roll or on a bolt so you can get the real wide. Yeah, so then I can, I've sprayed it, so I want to be kind of careful about laying it down there and get that covered because I want to be able to stitch. Now, see, I cut you need this it a little, down bit a little too farther? short. Yeah, and, it, and it may, we can't do it because okay. we've already sprayed it. So you want to be careful that you start it right up here and get it down. But I can add another piece down there, too. It'll it's no still big be deal. a key link. This is just serving as, a, as a, a cover so that my hopping foot doesn't get caught in any of it. Now, wherever it's loose, then I'll just take a pin and kind of pin through it, through it all at each corner. I just want it to stay put long enough for me to stitch. And when I'm stitching... So I'm, this is what makes the sandwich right. part of the salvi red sandwich. Yeah, you got to get it covered up because your hopping foot, as you know, will really get caught in the stuff and then that's trouble. So then you just bring your machine over and some, you can either outline the whole piece if you want to. It doesn't really matter because we're going to stitch and get our stitches interlocked. So uh, I usually do all my stitching and then I'll go all around the edge with just loop to loop to loop so that it's all interlocked. Then I just start anywhere. I'll, I can start right out here in the center. And I just have a habit of bringing my bobbin thread up. Uh, I have my uh, polyester, like a rayon thread in it. You can use whatever. So I'm going to use green, and it'll, it'll end up looking more green, but this will all disappear in there and, and give me a little color distributed around. If I want to use a stitch regulator, I can, or I can just do this straight if I want. What I want to do is stitch straight across, come back, and I just do it in segments like that, just back and forth till say I get about a square here and then I want to come back and cross over it this way so we're quilting in like a, a grid now I go through the whole vest like that get this all covered with a grid and then I'll come back and I'll, I'll, I'll just do loop de loops all in there and, and get that covered to looking like lace so that gives me nice uh, I just covered it as thick as I want. You don't have to do it really thick. As long as you've got these threads interlocked, it's going to stay together. Uh, but if you want it to be a thicker look, then just really keep going around in Pile circles in there and cover it. Yeah, cover and it really good. And then you can good. shade that way. Right. You could change colors and uh, and uh, you know make it variegated color in your thread. Now I've timed myself. I can do this front of this vest in three hours with all the stitching. Oh. Uh, and and this vest that I have on took. Uh, about 8,000 yards of thread. So uh, these spools that I have on here are 1,200 yards. So uh, that, including the bobbins and everything, probably went through about six That's six a lot of, of thread, that. but it sure is a beautiful garment. And I understand they can make drapery or curtains or lace shears for windows and sleeves for evening gowns, and that some people have stiffened it, and they've actually made hats and thread art pieces and cover lampshades and all kinds of things with right. that thread art. And when you wash it, when you dissolve it in the water, if you don't let it stay in there that long, it will keep some of the stiffness so that it won't be too flimsy. Uh, and then you can also use what dissolves as a, as a uh, stabilizer. Oh, you can. You can brush that on and it'll dry and then it'll stiffen things up for you to So you uh, can make them. a little bit in a bowl and then use it with paintbrush and stiffen right. it like a starch. Right. What wonderful ideas you have. So you can lay all kinds of uh, threads in there. You'll see in the teal vest that uh, we have, I did some sparkly threads. I, I laid some uh, knitting threads in there that had little square areas. I also used the silk tops under that. So you could even pick up the threads off your sewing room floor and save them and when you have metallics and everything in there then just spread those out too. That's right, right. There's no, in, there's no limit to it. And uh, I mean, you can make complete dresses out of it. Oh, uh, you it's can make absolutely lace beautiful. I'm going to try this as soon as I have a minute and right. can set some time aside so that I can actually make myself a garment. I've always wanted to do this. Thank you, Marilyn, for showing us this technique. It's just awesome. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. I hope you quilters will try this Selby Sandwich Lace.
My guest today is Marlis Bennett. She is with Bernina of America. Welcome, Marlis. Well, it's my pleasure to be here and to bring you the fashion show. Well, let's take a look at the show. And since I did the commentary in Houston when it premiered, I will do that today. Our first garment that we're going to look at is called Butterfly, and it was designed by Kayla Kennington. And Kayla has taken this garment and created a swirling opera coat ensemble that captures the essence of the exquisite work found in the Chinese robes of the Ming Dynasty, and it pays homage to the butterfly. A beautiful free motion embroidered butterfly panel takes center stage on the back of the coat. The tiny stitches resemble the forbidden stitch of the ancient Chinese textiles. Isn't it wonderful how she took exquisite threads and painted with them using her sewing machine? It sure is. Let's go on to our next garment, which is called Due Milano Porcella, and it was designed by Yvonne Porcella. Collecting over 40 different fabrics with iridescent qualities was the colorful beginning for Yvonne's collage of silks and cottons. For the designer jacket and straight wrap skirt, Yvonne arranged randomly cut fabrics in a range of bright purples and reds and colorful silk snippets on a fusible web over a foundation fabric, then fused them all together. When she used a very special foot, she used an edge stitch foot that has a guide down the center of the foot that would let you guide the foot and your stitches perfectly between two pieces of fabric. A great tip on doing that one. The next garment is called Tribute to the Straight Stitch, and it was designed by Mary Ray. The clean precision and simple refinement of the straight stitch provides texture and eye appeal in her jacket made from an original design. Mary used rows and rows of straight stitching in a one-half inch grid to quilt the file to a layer of wool batting. Each jacket section was stitched separately with rayon thread, then all were assembled to create the final fitted jacket. And she could have used the walking foot to do this because it would keep all of the layers from shifting as she was sewing because it moves the fabric both top and bottom working in conjunction with the feed dogs. That's great. The next one is called From Nebraska With Love and this one was designed by Jenny Raymond. Made with 450 yards of ribbon, the detachable satin streamer sleeve collars on Jenny's stunning coat are a dramatic and ingenious addition. Like a stained glass window, the dramatic colors in Jenny's vibrant palette shimmer on the stipple quilted black silk backgrounds that surround the piece designs. Color simply explodes from the surface in undulating curves that wind up the front of the coat and swirl across the regal evening gown underneath. And she's added so many beautiful beads to this. She, I imagine she did them by hand, but they're very easy to put on using the sewing machine. And then she stitched all of her decorative stitches using a twin needle, so you get twice the effect. It's absolutely beautiful. Our next garment is called Glorious Threads, and it was designed by Wendy Wright. Wendy's glamorous gown is a masterpiece of her ingenious stitching on a stabilizer that dissolves away. She stitched the exquisite bronze floral lace for the bodice using an array of colors combined with gold metallic thread. Well, wasn't it ingenious the way she used a heavier thread in the bobbin and then used two threads through the needle on this It turned project? out exquisitely. And so is the fashion show, and thank you for bringing it for to pleasure. us. My pleasure. We have Marilyn Badger back now, and she's going to show us some secrets on how to use salvi as a stabilizer. How you doing, Marilyn? Good. Uh, you know, I've done a lot of thread play, and previously I used the tearaway stabilizers, and they leave a lot of thickness to the quilt top, so the salvi's great. Um, what I've done is I've drawn some designs on here. You can do anything you want. You can do circles, ribbon work, whatever. But since these are angular, I need to hold a guide to outline them. To so uh, I've, I've got my base on the machine. It just slides on easily like this. I have a little adapter foot right here that helps me when I'm holding the guide. It's the right height to hold it up against and, and be able to work it easily. Then I'm just going to hold my guide along these mark lines that I have drawn. And you don't have to be that precise. Uh, you just want to get yourself a shape in here to stitch. So I'll just come down, change my angles, and down here. Then I can go back this way. So the foot is kind of acting like uh, gives you a little margin in there. It's 
Right, it just gives you, instead of a wiggly uh, angular line, it gives you a nice straight angular line. Mm -hmm. It protects you from hitting the ruler with a needle, and it also it has some thickness to it, so you can measure like... Right, and you, you can shift it around all directions, have it in front of you, behind you, sideways, whatever. It's great for stitching in the ditch, too. But so when I get that design work, then I just uh, work some curly cues until I get it all filled in the way I want, in one color. And you can see uh, in these designs that I've already worked how I filled it in with a darker color or lighter color. Then I outline the edges with a darker color, and that gives it the shading that it needs. And just stitch until you get it to get the look that you like. Gives it a little dimension. On this one up here, you can see I did dark shading here, light shading on one side. So uh, it's just what whatever you want. Then once I do that, I can throw it in the water and dissolve the solvy. It comes away from behind all that stitching so it doesn't leave it thick. Then I'll put it back on as a quilt and quilt it. I see it's thick enough to pin on and also to sew through because if you just did, had a little extra piece or you need a little extra length, you can sew through there. But what's the trick to getting that thread out? Well, that's a uh, vanishing thread. It washes away with water oh, as well. Oh, so that washes away too. But even so, the salvi dissolves and it would just leave the thread if you used regular thread. So, And you can see I stitched my little quilt top all the way around onto the salvi so I don't have to worry about pins and I can clamp the sides and get it stretched out there and it serves as my embroidery hook so I don't need to worry about a embroidery this hook. This would give you a second chance to color a quilt if you didn't like the patchwork the way it came out. Right. Or to freshen an old one up or it would give you some way to make it a little bit more modern or contemporary. Right, and then you can, when you want to quilt it, uh, I quilt behind it, and then to get these nailed down in the quilting, I might put on just some monofilament thread stitched down in there, so you don't see that. It, you retain all the color that you've done in the thread work, but you get it sandwiched in all, in all three layers, so it's not loose. Well, that is really nifty. I really like that idea. Now, in some cases, like the, the quilts that I have uh, with the circles on it, where I've done circles and then filled them in with sliver thread, I, I didn't stitch through those circles, and so it leaves it poofy looking so that it looks like it's trapuntoed. Oh. But it's actually because of the excess thread there, and then I nailed it down all around the circle, so uh, it, it gives it a nice look that it's filled with batting. What a wonderful idea. Well, thank you for showing all these You're techniques welcome. to us. It's great fun. If you like making wearables, I know you're going to enjoy our next guest. Joining me is Nancy Merman. Welcome, Nancy. Hi, Don. It's great to be here. I'm really happy to be able to share my ideas with your audience. That's great. I knew you as a quilter. Now you're a designer of patterns. Well, I'm still a quilter, and I Good. still love quilting, but designing patterns is fun. And I think that quilters like my patterns because I use at least five fabrics or more with each of my uh -huh. designs, and I think they enjoy that. But I don't use quilt patterns on my designs. And I think for quilters, an important thing to think about when transferring over to making wearable art is the concept of value, which is the difference between light and dark. Right. And in quilt making, you really need good contrast. Right. But in clothing, I think you get a better result with a low contrast. This is a vest that I made many years ago before I started uh, designing my own garments. And you can see it's very, very high contrast between the blues and the pinks. Right. This is a vest by Yvonne Porcella. Here's the same vest, but it's done in uh, fabrics with very low contrast, and I think it has a more pleasing result to it. It has a very smart look to it. Thank you. Which is great. Um, I like to make things that are very comfortable and mm -hmm. easy to wear. Um, this is a garment called the No Name Coat that I designed with Ellen Haubin. And you can see it's um, really an everyday kind of a garment. It's got five different fabrics. But if you change the fabrics, it can have a very different look. So on our tall and very, very thin friend yes. over there, <laughs> she is also wearing the No Name Coat, but it's done in silk. And I've cut down from five fabrics to three fabrics, and I think it gives it a very, uh, very dressy and very elegant look. So you can take the same pattern and go from everyday wear to something. You get a very different look. And I love the pants she's wearing. The pants are a palazzo type pant, which is, um, those are made out of silk. And here's the same pant made out of a, a soft wool jersey. And these pants are from a pattern called a cute vest and one seam pants. This is the vest that goes with this particular mm -hmm. pair of pants. And as quilters, we're very used to dealing in cotton, but cotton is not always the most appropriate right. fabric to use for, for clothing. So these are all 
um, cottons, which works well, but for pants, something drapier is important to use. Right. And this vest is very similar to the one that I'm wearing. Yes, that's a, a the the coat is called but button it coat too, and this is uh, the vest. It all comes in the same pattern, and it has an overlay. And here's another example of when cotton probably wouldn't work very right. well. So the overlay on your garment that you're modeling for us so nicely is may go home with me. <laughs> and uh, this is a very lightweight wool, so they both have a, a lot of drape to them. And this one is one I know I've seen quilters wearing at the shows. Well, this is called One Size Fits Almost All. I and like that. It does. <laughs> on the smaller person, the garment hangs uh, in points at the side. And uh -huh. then on the larger person, the hemline kind of gets more even. And it's got a cute pleat in the back. Uh, so Very you can nice. always take it in a little bit that way. Very nice. The um, jacket that you came in this morning is lovely. This is actually the very first pattern I ever designed, and it's still very popular, and I think quilters like it so much because it uses so many different fabrics. This particular coat has 27 different fabrics, and I think it took me over a year to collect all the, the right fabrics. Oh, and they do look right in the way that you put them together. And I love what you're wearing. Thanks. This is um, a great example of low contrast, and... Uh, um, the colors just sort of have the same value to them, is right, that? Right, right, so it works very well. And if we haven't convinced your viewers yet that uh -huh. they should start wearing wearable art, maybe they could make a bag for themselves because these bags are great. can be done in cottons and uh, easy to make, fun. You can make one in an afternoon and be done with it. So it's a real easy way to start getting into and the wearables. you said that one of them utilizes the fat quarters, so that... Yes, this is the fat quarter scrappy sack. That's and great. And it's friend, and that's a lot of fun. Well, we're always looking for uses for those. Yes. One of the things that I thought was outstanding were the way you used your buttons, and this is a great example of how you've done that. Yes, the buttons are actually fairly simple, but I've stacked one on top of another, mm -hmm. and so that gives it a very different kind of a look and a very elegant look, and it's a way to pull all the different colors of your garment together. You know, you said that you're spending a lot of time and money, and you don't want to skimp on the buttons. No, you don't. They're, they're an important design element in your garment. Mm -hmm. And you need to take just as much time to do that. Right. And it's fun looking for buttons. Great. Well, thanks, Nancy, for joining us today. Donna, thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Great. This is your Gidget and Gadget tip for today. If you have an industrial machine, you may have a binding attachment on it, or you can change that to a ruffling attachment, and you'll have the feed dogs out for the binder, but not for the ruffler, so you'll know how to change those. This is a common shank. It's a short, straight shank, and let me show you some of the other things that we can add to that. This right here, this is an outline foot. It has a little bitty hole in it, and you can get real close to things and see where you're going. This one here, this is a clear foot and it's spoon shaped and we like that so we can see our marking on the quilts and also so that we can ease some of that bulky fabric in with that spoon shape. This one here is called a cording foot. It has a little notch in one side and you can run it real close to a cord and you can get a nice tight uh, wrap on that cord with the fabric. I kind of like to use that one up against a zipper, but this one here is actually called a zipper foot. It has a split toe, and it'll go right tight up against the zipper. This one's a shearing foot. A shearing foot will bunch up the fabric. You drag your finger behind the foot just a little bit as it's going along, and that puts a little drag on it, so it'll bunch and pull every once in a while. It gives a neat artistic look. This one here, a hemming foot, a rolled hemming foot. As the fabric feeds in, it rolls right over and it stitches it down, a beautiful look. This one here with a split toe has a high and a low side on it. It's for running over those French hems and giving the finishing touch. Thank you for watching this episode of Quilt Central, number 206, Easy Elegance. Be sure to join us next time for the art of quilting, quilting with our creative sides.
quilt around the clock. Visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program. Central is made possible in part by Bernina of America. Nothing sews like a Bernina. Nothing. Quilting Machines International, providing quilting machines and supplies for the world. Sulky of America, taking creativity to new heights with decorated threads, stabilizers, and books. American Professional Quilting Systems, hand-guided elegance. The American Quilter Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. Paducah, McCracken County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Paducah, where no one is a stranger. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Celebrate quilting in your everyday living. To purchase videotapes of this or any episode of Quilt Central, you may call 1-866-PADUCA.